Whenever you buy a World War II uh, military surplus rifle like the Mosin Nagant uh, that I have here, you're going to face the problem of cosmoline removal. There's no way around it. Um, and I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I uh, have seen several versions of people using Tupperware, people using five gallon buckets, using uh, uh, foil turkey baking uh, pans or liners. Um, but you could never get the entire uh, barrel submerged. Um, and so I, I wanted to work on that because I thought that was the best way. And then also obviously once you've got it completely submerged, I would like to eliminate the hassle of having to take a toothbrush and, and, and a, a, a cloth and, and, and actually physically clean the gun. I thought there's got to be some way that you can completely submerse it in a cleaning solution that would agitate uh, the, the rifle and clean it just by agitation and letting it run, sort of an automated system. Um, I got to thinking about how, how to do that. Um, so first, uh, I did find a solution that I'm going to show you in a minute, but uh, this, this one here is typical of what you're going to see if you purchase a Mosin Nagant. Uh, there is a lot of Cosmoline on this. It's just everywhere. If you can see inside the breech there, it's, it's really, really in there. Um, it's just soaked in it and uh, even all the way down to the end of the gun. There's, there's quite a bit on it. And that's, that's a good thing for long-term storage. They had to do that. If they didn't, these guns wouldn't be around. But now we've got to get it out of there. Um, also, this, uh, this is the bolt that came out of that gun I just showed you. And it is got Cosmoline in every little nook and cranny. And then there's the magazine itself, and there's the spring inside of it uh, that you can take out. And uh, then you got your hardware and your butt plate. So now this one here is one that has been through my cleaning system. And as you can see, it is absolutely spotless. I mean, it's even, e even in here where Cosmoline really uh, likes to get in there and stay, it's, it, there's nothing. It's absolutely, absolutely spotless, the entire entire barrel inside and out it is clean this is the bolt now I completely disassemble the bolt um, except for the extractor pin uh, because there's always a chance of breaking that and I don't want to do that so uh, I do uh, I don't take that one part out but other than that I take all the parts out of the bolt before washing it and then I've got the magazine here and it is it is very clean inside and out after I get done, um, I, I use uh, hot water and simple green is my cleaning solution. And um, then I do, I get the worst of it out, and then I do just a pure hot water rinse cycle um, in, in the cleaning bath that I've made for this. And uh, that gets any uh, remaining uh, cosmoline or simple green in out. And then I take the parts out, I uh, use compressed air and, and blow uh, all the water out of these parts and then I quickly uh, completely soak them in rim oil which I really love uh, rim oil it's 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 a great uh, product and I just just soak everything down with it real good let it sit for a while and then I wipe it all down now in the middle of the cleaning and and this is uh, especially during this initial cosmoline removal I will pull uh, I'll stop the bath and pull this out and I'll run a, a bore brush through it a couple of times and, and then I'll resume the agitation. Um, and then I thoroughly clean it when I'm done too. I go ahead and bore brush it with the, the rim oil and, uh, and some swabs and uh, patches and, and, and get that all cleaned out. So how I'm doing that is I, I made this right here. And it's about four feet long. Uh, this is six inch PVC pipe that I got given to me. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the things you see here were, were things that uh, I paid little or nothing for. And I cut a slot in the top of it after gluing on the end caps. I did have to buy the end caps. Um, glued those on, cut this opening. It's big enough to allow uh, the barrel and the gun parts to go inside. 
and then uh, I add two gallons of almost boiling water. I get it to about 180, 190, pretty hot, but not boiling. I add eight ounce, ounces of simple green, and then I start the agitation. And how that works is through this device right here. Um, this is a gear reduction motor, a uh, 90 degree output shaft, and it turns at 8 RPM. Now, this uh, in the Granger catalog is over $200. This is a very expensive item. I would not have gone out and bought this. I probably would have sat here and, and manually agitated this, I guess, or, or would have found some other way. But about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, I, I was given this and I had no idea what I would ever do with something like it. But uh, I stuck it in a box, packed it away, and um, in the back of my mind I was thinking, well I've got that gear reduction motor if I ever need it for anything. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking about how to agitate this whole tube uh, slowly. And I remembered this and I pulled it out of a box and cleaned it up and hooked it up and it worked great. Made a little mechanism there, a scissor type mechanism. and. Um, it works great, so uh, it it pays off sometimes to uh, to keep that stuff you think you're never going to use. And uh, so I made a little switch for it here. And after I've got the gun barrel or the gun parts in there, and uh, two gallons of very hot water and the eight ounces of simple green, I just flip the switch and I go do something for 15 minutes or so. And this is what you get. Now this is just sloshing water back and forth. The gun barrel does stay put in there. I didn't know uh, because the inside of that tube is pretty slick being PVC, but the weight of the barrel uh, makes it maintain its position so it doesn't slide back and forth. And I was glad to see that. So it stays stationary, the water sloshes back and forth and it does a really good job of cleaning it. And then after I'm done with that I do the, the bolt and all the other small parts in a separate bath and um, they also stay uh, relatively well put once they settle into a, a, a position that they're happy in. They don't roll around in there and, and bang into each other at all, which was, which was really a good thing. So I let that run for about 15 minutes. And like I said, I'll stop it about midway through and run a bore brush through it a couple of times with the simple green solution. And then I put it back in and let it agitate for a while again. Then I take it out, uh, spray it all down, oil it up and it works really good. So, the first time you clean one of these, it's got so much cosmoline on it that you would really foul up the water and probably have to do several cleanings and change out the water and do it again. And um, So I thought there's got to be a way to get the gross amount of cosmoline off of here, once again, without having to, you know, have the uh, the hassle of wiping it down and, and doing a lot of handwork. So I have a process that works really well for getting the worst of the cosmoline off where you don't have to touch the gun at all and I'm gonna show that in a, the video I'm gonna make right now. Okay so here's how I'm going to remove the worst of the cosmoline. I'm gonna use my force air heater that I've set up on the table there and I've got the barrel sitting on my car hoist and I'm going to start heating it up at the end of the barrel where the side is and let the uh, cosmoline run downhill and as it heats up I'm going to just keep raising this and raising this and I got a pan down there that's going to catch most of this cosmoline as it drips off so I'm not going to video this entire thing this this takes uh, a little bit of time but I am going to insert some footage of it and maybe do some close-ups that show the uh, cosmoline running down the tube. Just as a quick side note, uh, notice the accumulation of cosmoline uh, right there at the end of the barrel and uh, it's, it's also all down through there. So whereas we heat that up, it's going to run down the inside also and drip out of the breech.
Okay, I have uh, finished uh, heating up the gun and letting the cosmoline run off of it. It's now hot. It's about uh, an average of 100 degrees, which is going to help uh, it being warmed up like that because I'm about to pour some pretty hot water on it. I would not want to do that if this was a room temperature gun. I could probably take it, but uh, I think this is going to work better because the gun's warm, the cosmoline's nice and runny and soft, and so uh, now I'm going to add some hot water. I've added the hot water, started agitating. I don't want the hot water to sit in the PVC too long. I'm going to add eight ounces of simple green to this. Get my camera all steamy. I'm going to let that run for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to run a bore brush through it and let it run a little bit longer and then I'm going to do a rinse. So now I can go work on another project while this is washing. Want to take a, a quick look at this water. Uh, as I said before, this is a combination of the wash water and the rinse water. Look at the cosmoline stuck on the sides of the bucket there. Also, know, and, and you can maybe see it in the water itself, it's floating around in there. It's still cooling off, uh, but cooled off enough, it's starting to stick to the sides a little bit. All that was in every nook and cranny in that gun. I really don't know of another way you could get all of that out of all those places. There's just so many little tiny places to try and get a pick or a brush. Um, you know, this seems to really work good and I think this is evidence right here. Um, and I'm also when this cools off, probably tomorrow, I'm going to drain this and I bet there's quite a bit of sediment uh, in the bottom. I, I did see some dirt coming through this, this drain tube. Um, so apparently there was some uh, dirt or dust or, or some kind of particles also in that cosmoline, which doesn't really surprise me. I mean, these things were packed up maybe uh, 70 years ago. Um, so uh, I, th I think that this shows that this is really working. Okay, I finished uh, washing the barrel and also rinsed it, um, as you saw in some of those video clips. And um, then I've taken compressed air and I've blown all of the water out of it, gotten it completely dry. And as you can see, 
This gun is extremely clean. Really, there's, there's just no trace of Cosmoline left on it. Anywhere. In the trigger mechanism, in the breech, all those places it was so thick. Even, and this is pretty telling I think, the rear sight. It's just all clean in there. There's, there's nothing. It's all gone. And now I'm going to take my rim oil and I'm just going to really coat this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and clean it like I normally would after firing. Um, by running a bore brush through it and, uh, and some, uh, some patches. Get it real good and clean there and then get it oiled up and everything. Um, also, of note, over here, this is the pan that was underneath that gun that I was heating up with that forced air blower. This is all the cosmoline that ran off of it. So what we did here was by heating it uh, and using gravity, we were able to get all that. And this is the force, the, the, the heater, the blower on the heater was blowing the uh, cosmoline away from the pan onto my shop floor. So I laid this towel out not only to catch it, but uh, this is a lot of Cosmoline. This would all be hand cleaning um, if you didn't do it this way. And, or, and even if you just went straight to the wash tub with all this Cosmoline in there, you're not going to get it the first time or maybe even the second time and you're going to get some really fouled up water and, and, and stuff like that. So I really think that's the way to go on the initial cleaning. Um, now I've got it uh, draining over here. Uh, this is both the uh, uh, the wash water and the, and the rinse water is all in the bucket there. It's still pretty hot. Um, it is, you might be asking yourself, why would somebody go to all the trouble to build something like this? Um, just to clean uh, Cosmoline off of a few Mosa Nagants. Well, I wouldn't. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, using these guns. My wife is going to be using one pretty much stock um, and I'm going to be using, I'm going to do a sporter uh, model and I'll be doing some videos on that. And so we are going to be using these guns and we're going to be using military surplus ammunition which has corrosive primers in it. Uh, it's very inexpensive. I have bought several tens of it. I've got enough to last more than a lifetime for a bolt action gun. And um, the, the thing with uh, corrosive primers is that as soon as you get done shooting the gun and you get home you need to disassemble it and clean it. Um, you can't just set it in in your gun cabinet or, uh, or your gun safe and say I'll get to that uh, you know in a few days or next week or whatever. Uh, you're gonna really do some damage to your gun if you, if you leave that uh, residue in there from that corrosive primer. So when I get home from out on the range or shooting on my property or whatever I'm doing I've been firing uh, that ammunition through these guns I'm going to take the two screws out and drop all the parts in here, give it a quick wash and a cleaning, and put them away. And that way they should uh, last and, and stay intact. And, and that's why I went ahead and spent all the time and relatively little money actually uh, developing this because I am going to use it uh, repeatedly. If anybody uh, wants to know the basic dimensions and parts list, if you want to build yourself one of these, uh, I would be glad to send you a list or post it on YouTube. Um, I appreciate uh, anyone watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I have no problem with uh, constructive criticism. Uh, that's how we learn and um, I appreciate you watching.